Welcome to the Ether. Today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Today on the Ether, what was supposed to be the Rack Corporate FM Official Spaces NFT Roundtable became the NFT Roundtable number two, hosted by Space Skellies with Cosmos Joe and Signal. That's right, we put out an APB on Robo, a bolo for Robo, because we ain't seen him yet, no, no. Come back to us, Robo. Come back. We miss you, baby. Let's take a listen. We haven't even tweeted these out. If you can, go share it because this is a whole different link. Uh, We had quite a few people that have the reminder set for this evening. So if you could just go down and share it, and then that would be awesome. But yeah, I hope Robo wakes his butt up and gets in here. I know it's late or early, actually, where where he's at. Um, but we should be good. How's everyone's week going? Everyone having a good week? Yeah. Can I complain? <laughs> Jacob, how are you? How about you? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. How are you doing? How are you, man? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> But yeah, guys, I don't know if there's any topics we want to cover. This is going to be a definitely wing it, nothing crazy. And apparently we invited, not we, Robo invited Joe and Signal and didn't even give a topic. So that's perfectly fine. Um, Is there any topics you guys would like to talk about and we can just get moving along? I know we had discussed last time uh, talking about community pool, uh, Stargaze's community pool. And I, I just wrote these down, these notes. Um, bringing in bringing in more liquidity into Stargaze, and then uh, that was that's what I had wrote down for topics from last time. But if you guys have any other topics, put them in the chat. And you got some <clears throat> really big brains in here that will definitely pick up and start talking. Uh, so please, any of the discords or chats, and we can get you taken care of. But let's get these tweeted out and make sure. Do we have all of our speakers? Uh, Berserker's not here. Robo's not here. Elliot, who else are we missing? Uh, trade orders, but he said he was going to be out for a bit and not home until later. Okay. 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 Perfect. Were you able to share this link in that uh, group chat? Yes, I was. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, I know that. I'm on I, Mark just... I'm sorry? Mold Chase. That's his name, right? I forgot. Rockland oh, yeah. Rock. What? what? I can't forget his name. Moltres. Yeah. He was, was he in here? He was just commenting in the group chat. So he might be in here. I am, I'm loving these PFPs though. That you guys are all rocking. Everyone's got them on, but we'll get to it. Um, and we can pass it to Joe and whoever wants to maybe cover this, but uh, the community pools within Stargaze. Uh, Elliot, you know more than anyone how heavy those are sitting. What are they sitting? Over a mil, two million uh dollar worth how what's that sitting at right now do you know the community pool yeah oh that's like 21 million 21 yeah okay so it's even higher so yeah (laughs) yeah. it shows how much i pay attention to the community pools um but yeah i I wanted to talk about that and how i mean that's what we wanted we asked robo to cover this what we could be doing with these community pools and i'm curious from joe's perspective or, or anyone's uh, how you guys feel about that? Like, wh- how should community pools be used, and does it do any good that they're just sitting there? Uh, yeah, I'll let whoever wants to speak on that. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, the, the Stargaze community pool should really only be used to find ventures that are going to drive volume. I, I, I can't name something off the top of my head. I know that 
Hubble is decent as an analytics tool. It's third party. I don't believe they got any funding from Stargaze. Stargaze has info star zone. That one's pretty good too. And I, and I know that a community member is building his own and I took a look at it. He showed it to me. Um, it's George nine D. He puts a couple of nice threads every now and then on Twitter. His looks awesome. And he's just building it in his free time. So it would be cool if the community pool could be used to just like speed up some of these analytics type things, even if they just want to fix the UI to make it look more, more user friendly. And um, I really think those are, they're minor things, but they definitely drive volume for sure. Uh, and I think having as many of those competing as possible would be really cool. So that's one thing that I was thinking about this week and did have a quick chat with Sunnyside about the analytics as well. I don't know what, you know, what kind of, what kind of proposal would be needed, but I'm just saying in general, I wouldn't mind community funds being used to speed up development and UX of those, those analytics. Yeah, that part too, like, it's difficult. Um, the, the biggest thing that I know from their side is like, if they fund another person to bring on, it's not really just about the money. Like, it also needs to convince the team as well, I would say, uh, you know, to actually like onboard them and get them working. So that that one's always just like a tough spot for me to like fully say that it would work just because the money is there, if that makes sense. No, no, I'm not saying that, but I think maybe like um, something that's like, let's say halfway built and it could be, it doesn't need to be done internally by stars. And, you know, someone took a look at it that knew what they were looking at and said, all right, this is like six months worth of work. What would it take to get this done in six weeks? just to have it right. Like I, I know devs who have built NFT tooling just off the back of their own NFT men. And um, they, that, but they're, they're full-time devs, right? And you, a community members working on this in their free time, if they were extra incentives to speed it along, I definitely think, I definitely think the analytics tools drive volume. It makes, you know, NFT sniping into, into a sport and people do spend more time looking for specific nfts when the tooling is really easy to use almost like you're like we were talking the other day you're on target's website or ebay or walmart.com and you're looking for a specific color of a specific size of a specific thing the ux makes a big difference that's all i don't think it's urgent like needs to be done today but i think it could be done you got something to add to that elliot uh no i was gonna say i saw shoot with his hand up yeah, yeah, so no. I, I I invited Shru and Rama up. So let's get these these uh, brains in here. Yeah, I have a comment uh, based on like what Joe said. Like, so in my day job, like we hire a lot of like outside vendors that typically will come in, do a job faster than internal, and you know, based on that, like usually it comes in at a lower cost too. Like right over time. Um, and so I think I think Stargaze is in a unique position because we do have a lot of like you know, EJ and Bonzi and, you know, a lot of these like blue chip collections that want to see Stargaze like really succeed. And I think like, so what Joe was saying, like if, if there are things that we can do, I think the blue chip like NFT leaders w are, would be good shepherds of like almost how like Kujira is doing the Senate. Like, I feel like the people like that are that really have an invested interest in stargaze succeeding and blowing up would be good shepherds to be like hey these are the things that we want stargaze to accomplish we'll go find the teams and the people to you know bring in a quote and say okay well we'll add this to the website or whatever and then since they're so kind of plugged in to like you know the actual main team i think it makes that transition a little bit better um in my head this is all making sense i don't know if like I just kind of came up here and was like, just kind of half listening, but um, does, does, is what I'm saying kind of like resonating? Like, I mean, obviously everyone here, uh, you know, wants to see Stargaze succeed in a big way. I was almost jokingly going to type in the chat. I think we should use some of the community funds to uh, buy a, uh, like a board ape yacht and like have it be owned by Stargaze 
uh, so that if we ever can get ETH NFTs over here, we have have one that the community pool owns, you know, obviously held in like a multi-sig or something like that. But I think something like that would create like some buzz. People would be like, what the fuck is Stargaze? You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I don't know how how well that would like resonate out and bring people in, but it, it's it's something that's unique and different and and planning for the future as far as like cross-chain NFTs. Like we see a lot of uh, like what Rec Gang's doing now. I think they're on like, you know, more chains than I can, than I have fingers. So uh, anyways, I'll, uh, I, I don't know if you have something, Joe, you, since I was kind of talking about what you were saying. Uh, no, the signal was before me. I'll wait. If you wanted to respond directly to that, Joe, feel free to go ahead first. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say is I, I think community funds should not be used for, for salaries, but like a flat fee for a specific job, I think it's and it, that and that the community is behind and we think there's a good chance it'll increase volume. I'm cool with that. I just I don't yeah, like, like an the, RFP, like an RFP, yeah. like there's a specific task. And I'm paying you to do X, Y, Z, and then cool. We'll keep you in the Rolodex. Thanks for your service. Like that, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly. I, I would be all in favor of that. Like a one and done, no commitment f- from from Stargaze to this person. They have to complete the job to to get you know most of their pay, whether you want to vest it or whatever, or maybe you don't you don't pay until the product is done, and maybe it diminishes over time if they take too long, something like that. And I know that that can be done. So um, yeah, signal. I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to say that I do like that model where you're, you know, you're rewarding people who have already started trying to build something for the platform. Um, you know, they've maybe bootstrapped it themselves or something. They've demonstrated a certain amount of commitment and uh, they have like, you know, associated success, right? Um, one thing I would say, though, I think you started to allude to this in the beginning, Joe, is like, I think community pools, generally speaking, are deceptively like large. Um, they're not actually as large as they seem to be. It's more about like the liquidity that you have uh, and the volume on any given platform. Um, and so, when you do start spending from a community pool, it does like drive very quick. Uh, it kind of accelerates uh, the uh, you know accelerates like the diminishing value of the total community pool as soon as you start spending. Um, but I think there are like obviously a couple, I wouldn't say they're no brainers, but there are a few very clear tools that are being used by the community. And I don't really see why you wouldn't at least explore funding those more. Uh, one thing I had to ask, um, unless anyone else has a comment on what I've just said, I had a, a question for Sunny, um, maybe maybe after Joe responds, but I'm I'm curious about if you if you have an idea for the Stargaze team of like how much how much sort of specific research they've done uh, on like community feedback for needs and things like that. I'm sure there's been do- uh, some done, but has there been like a, a lot of you know like very systematic uh, s- sort of studies of of what users want and what creators want at this point in time, just so things can be like prioritized. Uh. Yeah, and I guess I'll just answer that real quick. I don't get that much insight into things. Um, I don't see everything that's shared. I There's like definitely documents that I'm not a part of, and I don't, you know, know how they all started and stuff. So I, I can't give an honest answer on that one. I'll comment on that real quick. Um, I will say that in regards to funding per project great idea uh, paying a kind of a subcontractor to uh, fulfill the job and they would do it twice as quickly uh, and on top of that i have personally reached out to stargaze with devs uh, of my own as you guys see we have what we've built that are willing to work for them and work per job and they don't seem too responsive of it uh, so i do want you guys to know like we are lending hands we are trying to like push the envelope you know we have these devs that you know no other way to put it they were the best devs on Terra. they were some of the 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 most brilliant minds um and just because a lot of the work they did because it was so high end was closed source um you know it's hard to show a lot of that work but just know we are you know myself personally and many others i know they are we have you know, referred a lot of devs. We referred people, UI devs to help with the front end and devs for the back end. 
but as far as like the data analytics, uh, I don't know much about that either. So I, I'm hoping they're getting some type of feedback because I would say that's kind of important. But uh, we do have, Joe, before I jump to you, we do have Robo here, right? This is Robo? Yeah, who's on the Raccoon account? Th that's Malt. That would be Moltres. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. That's, that's okay, not we got... Robo. <laughs> Hey guys, <laughs> I was, what's up? I was so confused. I said I thought Robo was. I, hey guys, just I want everyone to understand this is not usually hosted by Space Skellies. It is hosted by Rack FM and it's put together by Robo. This is not put together by myself or even my team. Uh, so make sure you understand this is usually on Rack FM's account, and Robo has and really enjoyed it last week. And so I know he's going to be upset probably when he when he wakes up and notices he missed this. Um, and so just keep that in mind. Tell them thank you for getting us together. If you guys enjoy this, give a share, give a follow. And Joe, we'll jump to you um, in regards to where I thought Robo was here, but it was not. All right. Um, what Signal said is like a really hard truth that I don't think anyone on any chain is facing. The, the liquidity and the volume prevents some spends that would otherwise be like very strategic and very worthwhile just because... You know, the 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 star stars is is a lot different than the other tokens of the other chains because stars is actually money on the blockchain, right? It's it's used to buy something, and then usually what happens is whoever receives it is going to now convert it to USDC or whatever. So it it there, it does get used, and the 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 tokenomics. I'm not an expert on tokenomics. The tokenomics are not good, especially for these market conditions. And I got. I got accused, you know, of fudding the token price because I made a comment about adjusting the tokenomics. That affects the community pool because you're devaluing the community pool with the way the inflation is set up and the, and the super low volume. Um, yeah, you'll get lucky every once in a while. You'll have a TSOS mint or like a big mint. But in general, like the, the Stargaze daily volume is like one NFT on Polygon or one NFT on Cardano or Solana. It's, 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 it's not enough to really spend the community pool in a strategic way, even if there were a bun bunch of worthwhile projects. So I definitely get that. Like, you know, even if there was like the perfect product out there for X amount of stars, I, it, it, you know, one spend could murder the price. Now you're devaluing the rest of the community pool. People that are staking think they're earning rewards. Really, they're getting diluted for staking. Only 40% of the STARS tokens are staked. So the other 60% is getting diluted, just like the community pool is. People are keeping liquid so they could buy NFTs probably. And then when those NFTs get bought, the teams obviously have to convert that into USDC. It's just how it is. So there's like there's something that's just not 100% right. Um it, for the and obviously the marking conditions suck for everybody, but particularly for stars. It, I, I think stars is probably hurting, you know, really, really, really bad because of this, and we don't see it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I, I stars is there's typically one of the tokens that don't move much, and I've always wondered about the tokenomics. I'm not someone that knows a lot about tokenomics, and I did see. I think you had a a write up or messages about it, and it's people don't like change, which it's, that's what the frustrating thing can be. But I believe you're right. You guys are hundred percent, right? Like something has to change. Uh, and, and sadly, when you come to a small community with small volume where everyone holds each other's hands uh, to really make it become a business. And we want like, like, let's just be blunt. Like if we want this to be a business and liquidity to flow, things have to change. It, that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah, 100%. The, the, the other thing is, even if everybody at the same time realizes like, hey, even if you're staking, you're not really making anything because of the dilution, like game theory would suggest you just put everything into blue chip NFTs if you like stars. But then you can't vote on governance because you have NFTs instead of stake stars. So th that, that part's backwards. And I think the, the NFT staking, whatever mechanism they come up with, I'm guessing it's going to be, you know, analogous to liquid um sorry super fluid staking on osmo where you can get some voting weight for providing liquidity which is what should happen you're the you're the major stakeholder on the platform when you're buying selling holding nfts you're the liquidity provider on an nft blockchain right so if you can't vote and you're providing a lot of this volume or liquidity 
some something has to change. I really think the NFT staking, whatever form it rolls out in, I don't care how many times it needs to get adjusted until they get it right. I think it's going to be totally worthwhile. And I would say long, long, long overdue. I, I couldn't agree more on that point. Like, and, and there's such a disconnect between people that are the fact that NFT holders aren't voting on stuff. You know, you have this big governance disconnect between them and the people that are uh, staking the token. I wonder with this, I mean, we're talking about potential things to like fund as well. I'm not, I don't want to suggest anything to like degen here, but like in a, in a traditional economy, this is where you would probably bring in like some kind of lending system to, to increase liquidity. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that could be played with there where you were like borrowing, borrowing versus NFTs or something. But like if you were borrowing in stars, uh, and it, it it has this uh, this inflationary pressure on it that seems to be that is outweighing uh, purchases. It might be something to like to to at least in, increase liquidity. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking aloud here. But the the other thing is, in order to fix the NFT staking, let's say you came up with a magic formula where you're going to credit like maybe the top 100 collections on Stargaze. If you hold them in your wallet for 30 days, you get some type of, I don't know if you, what you want to call it, like a voting token, or maybe the NFTs themselves carry some weight when you vote on proposals and whatnot. Um, that, that, that would definitely drive volume. And it would also, I think, stop people, in, it, maybe not directly, but will stop people from, let's say, listing NFTs at stupid prices where that, that no one's going to pay. Um, it would probably affect the you know the I, I looked at one of the tsos nfts today someone listed and unlisted it like 45 times and they just minted it a couple hours before it was it was just so silly and i think that like meaningful transactions on the chain are a lot a lot more important than like the 75 flips of like you know the same nft for 90 stars it just um just giving the nfts more value by giving them some voting weight, it doesn't need to be like a perfect formula. It could be a fraction of what we think the floor price is at any given time. I think it would, uh, I think it would change things just a little bit. Um, I don't know if it will solve the inflation issue for, for this, but you know, stars should be looked at as actual money, just like fiat is looked at as money. And, 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 you know, the 45% inflation is, is not doing great in this, uh, this particular set of conditions. Um, I know too, in terms of like liquidity and I of course can't give dates and honestly, I haven't seen the formula or how it's set up, uh, when NFT like staking goes live, there's going to be like a system in place, right? Where you can stake, uh, specific NFTs. I think they need to be approved through governance, but I'm not positive, um, where then they can earn a stars reward similar to like just staking stars right now um and i know like the thought is is like okay you're releasing money but usually the people who are staking nfts um they're gonna you know go right back into the system and hopefully that increases some volume um so not directly related to anything that you guys had said but uh you know something that i know that's coming up you know something I'd really love. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Joe. I was just gonna say, where, where are those additional stars gonna come from? They're they're just the existing stars, but they'll be spread out more towards, or some of it towards NFT holders. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and don't as always don't don't quote me on this. I, I still struggle to like kind of understand reading through Mint Scan, but I'm pretty sure there's like a very big portion of. Uh, the pool that's sitting in a reserve fund specifically for NFT staking. Okay. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't expect you to have all the answers. I just, I just like the idea that some of these, you know, thoughts have been tossed around already and they're probably at least being, you know, talked about a little bit. I think that's definitely promising, but yeah, sorry to cut you off signal. No, I am um, just kind of pie in the sky stuff. One thing I'd love to be able to do is lend stars to like new projects 
or new artists that might be launching a collection a couple months later. It'd be really cool if there was a, like a marketplace for that, um, where you could kind of u- use like that token specifically uh, to 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 help them kind of like fund themselves as they're producing their um, their collection. If you really like them, right, and then uh, and then sort of have that paid back when they mint, for example. Just thinking about uh, ways to spread spending around. I, I also mentioned to Shane um, in the Discord and and today on Twitter. You know, there's no reason why Stargaze can't have something during NFT NYC. I mean, it's like in the same neighborhood as where pretty much a bunch of team members are based. There will be some of the artists in town for NFT NYC. Like, I think these in-person events, especially if they're just like they're not like um, on the other side of the world, right? They're spread out to different cities, small events like this. I think that would be great, even if it was one day and it could be streamed to somebody's, you know, maybe like Stargaze official YouTube, you could stream it just one day, celebrate some of your artists that are in town for the Ethereum event. And uh, I think that would be a decent use of funds if if it was needed. Yeah, this is great points. And I want to re, re go back a minute on um, one thing you guys said about <clears throat> lending. That was, I like that idea, lending to be able to fund a project kind of as a silent investor um, or where they can just have a platform where they can lend for, uh, you know, take X percentage and make sure that it's all paid back. Like you said, during the mint, that is super like that. That's a very, uh, I don't know, that could easily be done. Um, now does that get into different legalities and stuff? I don't know, but that is something that could definitely be done. And then I had, as I was listening to you guys talk about, what do you guys think as more of like, uh, you know, DeFi on Stargaze, like, what do you think could be brought? Because the problem with Stargaze 100% is everything's closed source or is open source and you have to go through governance. So we like, we have the, we have the worst of both worlds on Stargaze right now we do. Uh, it's not really centralized. It's not really decentralized. It's a little bit of neither. Um, and then it's also the tokenomics are pretty much not where they need to be. Um, and then you, you know, to get anything in, you, you can't build what you want because it has to be open source. So it's pretty much like I build a contract and I have to give you the keys to my business. That makes no sense. So for someone that, you know, myself who runs a business, the way that we have to do things in Cosmos, it's kind of backwards, or not in Cosmos, but on Stargate, it's kind of backwards. Like, how do we, how do you guys think, um, you know, I'd like to go through the the whole panel. Like, one thing you guys think that could bring, you know, whether it's DeFi or, or lending leverage, like, one thing that really crosses your mind um, that when you think of Stargate, how could we bring liquidity? If you went to Shane today or the team, what would be one thing? you really wish that could just happen tomorrow uh, that you feel would help bring liquidity to Stargaze with no restrictions? Like, what do you think? This is easy. I would buy NFTs with credit cards. That would be the easiest thing. I mean, I don't know if you could build it. And and I know that Shane's in New York City. It's probably a disaster to set up something like that. But Cato is also in New York City. And they're, they're able to integrate this on different platforms. And I think it's going to be within Kepler Wallet. I, I actually met them and they were talking about having this right inside Kepler Wallet. Um, there are other chains where you can buy NFTs with a credit card. You could buy NFTs with Bitcoin. You could buy NFTs with Ethereum. I think that would be a game changer for, for Stargaze. Absolute game changer. 100%. Uh, Elliot, what do you think? And feel um, free so- to speak. I know you're on the team, but, but speak openly. This is not recorded. Uh, So, I mean, no, I agree with the fiat on ramp. Uh, This is the idea that I know I get a lot of uh, a lot of people don't necessarily like it, but uh, community referral bounties like one to two thousand dollars for a community member. If they send a legitimate project over that gets featured, it's like I'm aware there's a ton of KVOTs to that. But like if it's a big project. The easiest way to get to new communities is through people that are already a part of that community. So that's my personal. I would make I would make so much money doing that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like it, it gets the community, and it, it literally gives back to the community. And it, the process would have to be extremely centralized, which I think is 
you know, the part that a lot of people don't like, but like, you know, if you go over and you bring over a project that has done $50,000 in legitimate volume and they're just starting out and you bring them over, we can reward a community member with one to two grand, which most likely will be still staying within the stargaze ecosystem and maybe they cash out some and then we get a new project that's you know notable somewhere else and we can relatively trust them because it came from a community member i think i think it's tough in this market to do that but i think in general uh, that that would be kind of a low risk experiment i would think because you could easily track the results and then you could see if it's working you know, after five times doing it and then decide whether to continue or to can it. Yeah. And like the referral amount can be anything, but you know, I don't know. To me, I look at it. I'm like, if you say, Hey, if you bring over a decent project and you get a grand, I feel like that's an amazing incentive to basically mobilize the entire community to at least give it a shot with one of the bigger groups that are part of. Yeah. And I I do want to step in like that brings it kind of in, you know, in the real world, even with my business, like we have referrals, like it's the same concept and people, you'd be so surprised how much they go one step extra to get a referral because of a bonus they can receive. Um, And I think that's a great idea. And I don't know, you know, you said it becomes centralized and that that's what I plays right back to what I said. Like we have the worst of both worlds right now because we're not decentralized no matter what we want to claim to be on Stargaze. We're not, and we're not centralized like because we also want to control everything, but we don't want to control people. And we're trying to give off two different perspectives. Um, and right now it's kind of like biting us in the butt. So we got to like make that jump. We just got to like go over the fence. Like what we, we can't play on the fence. Like we got to figure out one or the other. And a referral program, that's a, it's such a simple, like, just like Joe said, it's so simple to just try it. You know, that's what, it's very true. That's a, it's a good point you made, Elliot. And Joe's right. Like, it's, why can't we just try it? What's the worst that happens? It doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I want to hear, uh, I haven't heard Jacob speak. Jacob, what, I know you're not, uh, I know you're on, are you on Juno as well, correct? Yes, I'm on Juno and, and Stargate. What's, we launched first on Stargate. Okay. So uh, coming from, you know, you were on Stargaze at first, what's, it doesn't have to be about Stargaze. It can be an overall in general, but this one topic we were, t- we're talking about is one thing you could make happen tomorrow on Stargaze. Like what's one thing you feel would be unique to, uh, that could help push the community and the platform to become better. I can- hey Jacob, I can't hear your mic. Can you guys hear him? He- he's covering, he's covering his mic. I think your mic's covered maybe. No, really. I'm using my AirPods. Let me let me change it. Give me a second. You're good now. <laughs> yeah, it's good I'm right there. Not, I'm not like good. I would say the, the the analytic tools to have it in one platform so user can just go to it. I know like when I start is don't have like the the perfect UI <laughs> in a sense, but they get in there. But I would say that's that's one one step. I got you. So a little bit what of I, UI. I have one question for you. When you say um for for Stargaze, uh kind of like worst of both worlds why, why do you think so? like uh, like a community get it um smart contract is like the worst in both worlds i kind of think that that's kind of like a your mic's cutting hey your mic's cut now i think you're asking why do i think there's the worst of both worlds well the worst of both worlds is that it's pretty simple stargaze wants to control everything but they also don't want to they want the community to control a certain amount but they don't want them to control too much um and that's when it becomes you have uh you know you have smart contracts that you have to build you know how do you in business how do you become a better competitor to your to, to another competitor down the road you have to be able to build smart contracts that haven't been built and when i'm sending devs to stargaze to say okay, here's a dev to build you this contract, to build these features. And then you're saying, well, we don't really have the funds. Like, we don't really know. Like, it's kind of, like, which, what do you, it, it's not wrong, it's not right. But I'm saying that's what's happening is we want these features built. We have the devs to do it. Um, so, Joe, I see your hand up. What's up? This kind of goes back to the spaces last week with... Um with uh what was it jg and uh nft switch i 
I, I get exactly what you're saying. I think the answer is then you just don't deploy on Stargaze. And then if Stargaze sees devs building stuff that they wanted to build on Stargaze, they start building it on Juno or whatever I don't, territory. I don't know what is going on over there. I don't know if it's permissionless or anything, but I think, I think they're just picking the wrong place to build. I mean, it, it wouldn't take much for Juno NFTs to have more volume than Stargaze. It really wouldn't. Um, the the problem agree. with Juno, the problem with Juno NFTs is the community simply didn't support loop. That, that was the problem. The problem is not that um, NFTs suck on Juno. The NFTs, I think, are quite good on Juno. They're just that the community didn't support the platform. I, I would like to say that it, it's not also that the community didn't support Loop. It's more of like Loop failed at supporting the community. They failed at supporting the projects they wanted to launch with them. They failed massively at doing that. Yeah, I, it, I think it, even it, before the first project launched, though, I think there was already like bad blood, and I don't think it was going to be. Uh, it, I don't think it was going to go away. I think I think if Loop decided not to launch and those projects launched on a different, you know, a different NFT platform, they would have done marginally better at least. Yeah, I don't know much about Juno, but I did message someone today uh who was it mayor i was talking to mayor i said hey just like just want to clarify juno is permissionless i'm not not saying we're going to juno that's not what i'm saying um but i'm i'm just curious how we're kind of at a, a point with stargazes we have the communities and I, I feel like we we have great people and uh, from from just creators to community to devs like we have great everything but if we limit too much Everyone's just going to get tired of it and they're going to go somewhere else. Just like you said, there's, there's a point in time while we're building right now, you know, we're building staking platforms and we're building uh, pretty much everything we could dream of, but the workarounds that we have to do just to go one step, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, and like, if I want to build a smart contract, I have to get that voted in <clears throat> and I have to go open source. Well, what's the next guy going to do? He's just going to take my open source contract and then he's just going to go do it for pennies on the dollar that I just spent 10 grand to get made. Uh, so this is where it comes down to um, if we're referring these devs to do all this crazy, you know, this incredible tech that can be built. Uh, at what point do we say, okay, we can allot a certain amount of community funds to get these jobs done or these features if, and just let the community vote on it. Do we think this would be a good feature to have? And let the community vote on it. Uh, and I think that'd be something we could really, I don't know. Like I said, it doesn't always have to work and it may not work, but what's the worst that happens? It just, you just say no and at least you tried and you move on to another alternative. Um, but yeah, true. What's up? But like when 721 comes out, what's from stopping you from deploying whatever you wanted to deploy on Stargaze on Juno and just let Stargaze do what Stargaze does? and be the nft minting you know platform i mean if that's if that's you know how things are and then you know your community bridges you know the nft over to juno to you know do whatever cool thing you're building that you want to kind of keep private now if there are things that people want don't mind being public then they can you know obviously you know post them up on stargaze i mean i know that's not an answer because like we can't do that right now and we haven't seen how the whole you know uh cross cosmos nft kind of transfers go but I, I mean that that would be my i guess retort to that is like just build it on juno then and it's safe or, or not safe but you know you can keep your code proprietary and you know then people can still mint on stargaze and just do whatever you you've built on on juno but maybe if i can add to that is like uh, what if you add the choice to have like something very similar to Stargaze on Juno and then you don't have to actually bridge or use 721 like ICS 721 to bridge from Stargaze to Juno? I feel like it will be more of an asshole to actually like mint one place and then develop everything on Juno. So I don't know. I feel like, like for example, on Ethereum, it's permission permissionless. You can just have your NFT collection. It means you go on OpenSea and then you can do whatever you want on the chain. So I feel like if we had something very similar to Stargaze and Juno, and there's like a lot of volume, it would be much easier for anyone to just develop whatever they want and just be on one chain. And you don't have to bridge stuff. And I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's just the little things that just a bit like, like an asshole and you just don't want to do it because you have an extra step. So. Well, and then I'd argue we're at the place, you know, and I've said this a lot before, it's like, we're still early, right? 
and it's like eventually all that shit will happen in the background and you won't know if there's your nfts on stargaze juno fucking joe chain i I, you know what i mean like i don't like the, the end result of all this is like you just have a wallet and all your shits in it and it doesn't matter where it's at it's just it it is right like i mean i know that's not what any of us want to hear right now but at the end of the day i think that's that's where we all end up right like it it's a seamless experience and that's how when when normies are truly involved in all this shit like it's not going to be like oh i have to take my nft on stargaze and i have to put it in the bridge and it goes over to juno like no one's going to fucking sign up for that shit we're all here because we're early right but like in the real world they just want to be able to open up their phone and see a picture of their fucking squid or their fucking cat or their fucking corporate you know animal right like so I don't know. Like, I think some of these are, you know, quote unquote, we're early problems. But but yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I think we're here to talk about these things to kind of get to that future that we all want. Um, and kind of bringing it back to like what we were talking about, the things that we would do, I would 1 million percent take the outside of any I think we need to like, use semantics here. I'll, I'll even though Robo's not here, and he's our semantics genius. Um, we need to, we need to delineate what's community pool. And what's developer funds, right? Because I think we use the word community pool. And in some places, it probably is a community pool. But in some places, it's really like for the devs, right? So I think we really need to like kind of know like what what portion of the community pool is for the community to decide with and what should be done to have like the devs to make sure like all of that shit's, you know, taken care of. And we do have something that's being built and function. My idea for the community pool is that as a as an NFT platform, I think we should invest in blue chips that are maybe either in Cosmos or outside of the Cosmos. And there should be a community uh, NFT wallet that that someone is actively, you know, I don't know, maybe actively trading is like the word that I'm trying or the phrase that I'm trying to come up with, but like monitoring it. Like, like so for instance, like uh, Rec Gang has a treasury, right? And they bought a Ute at like fucking 40 soul when souls like shit the bed, right? And then that shit pumped and they like flipped it and made like, you know, some decent profit on it. And and, and I, I know that just adds like a whole nother layer of complexity to a community pool. But I think something like that would be cool. And I think really, like I said earlier in the call, like just use some of the community pools and buy a fucking like board ape and like fractionalize it on Stargaze. Like why the fuck not, man? If you want to bring eyeballs here and bring people, and if we're talking about paying for like referrals and stuff like that, I think something something splashy and shiny like that, I think that could also do the trick. I agree. It'd be cool to also bring on like maybe uh like pay an artist, a uh, high end artist to come over and launch a collection or or something like that. That'd be unique as well. Uh, but yeah, I definitely agree. Hun- yeah, uh, 100%. like hundred percent. Like uh, I don't know who like I don't a popular artist on ETH is, but like have them do like an open edition where it's just like one image, but maybe we have like five thousand of them on Stargaze for us. You know what I mean? It's the same image, but it's exactly. Like, yeah, I think that would be an interesting, uh, you know, use of funds as well. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like I said, I feel like having an actual delineation between this is for the community funds and this is the dev fund, because I think that those lines get blurred a lot. And then that's why all these people, you know, sometimes myself included, when I feel very convicted, like bitch and complain about like where some of this stuff is going, because I think there should be a differentiation of what those like the terminology that is used is very important, I think. Yeah, so like a, a pool breakdown in a sense, like us, us having more of a transparent idea of what what is allocated to what is what you're saying, correct? Yeah, because yeah, obviously I, I think some of the inflation right now is that in Stargaze is going to like fund development work, correct? Yeah, I, yes, I believe so. Yeah, so like, yeah. so like when I hear like, like inflation's a problem, then I'm like, well, if you lower inflation, then who's gonna, you know, take care of the people? Then we're gonna end up in this compio situation. You know what I mean? And so it's like that's the last thing that I think we would like is the people that are passionate about their project not being able to, you know, see it through. So yeah, I agree. And signal your hands up. Uh, what's up? Yeah, I just wanted to respond. Um, I think Shrew makes a lot of good points. You know, um, kind of actually starting off something you said earlier when you talked about the worst of both worlds. Um, 
I think you kind of look at something like Stargaze and you have to recognize the very limited scale of it. Uh, it's like, it's kind of like a startup, you know, very much so, even if you have a large uh, pool <laughs> and so on, right? Um, so I think that what, a lot of what we're talking about is we're looking for like additions to scale it, right? Which are all necessary, but a lot of the time with the small business, you want to assess like what makes it unique or how do you differentiate yourself, right? So to finding like what you invest in. Sorry, my dog, someone just, someone just came here. Sorry, one second. You're good, you're good. Uh, okay, um, and then so so right now, it's like you need to maximize, I think, the investment in the talent um, because that's like right now, I think it's all kind of operating and this is kind of maybe a negative, um, but it's like kind of operating as like a seed funding kind of thing where projects start on Stargaze and I think once they hit a certain point, they are inclined to start releasing on other platforms, um, which I think you want to try and find a way to like retain those and make sure that they can stay here. So I don't know if you invest in that some way, um, but you want to invest in that. But, but it's, that's also like an opportunity, right? Like I think it's also a platform that's not too saturated. So people can jump on board and like get their unique project seen, which is really cool. Uh, and the other thing is obviously interoperability. Um, and for them, like, Oh, am I muted? Okay, good. Um, when you talk about a future, and like in where like we all will all we all see this future where it's like a mixed bag of in our wallet, we can't tell if it's on Stargaze or on something else. But that also doesn't happen without work, right? So like you want to be um, you want to be like working and trying to get ahead of that rather than sort of like waiting for other people to build that. So wherever wherever you strategically you can be. Trying to invest in cooperation or interoperability, I think is best. I agree. Very good points. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. And I see uh, Jake, you got your hand up. What's up, Jake? Yo, what's up? I have a lot of thoughts on all this. Really appreciate listening to everyone's feedback. But I wanted to like basically get two points across. The first one is that outposts are, are coming with Stargaze. We have some some great engineers that are working on Stargaze outpost, outpost that will allow you to trade NFTs on a chain like Juno. So you can have like permissionless development on Juno. You can make your game NFTs or whatever. You can customize the smart contracts. But you can list on the Stargaze marketplace where the liquidity is. I think that, you know, um, obviously I have lots of thoughts about it, but, you know, I think the, the Stargaze strength is like, it's the best place place for NFT liquidity in in the cosmos by far. So, um, if it's going to be the NFT hub, like Osmosis is the DeFi hub, uh, you know, like it's uh, the, there's a lot of great things going in Stargaze's favor. I think here, um, they just need to like maintain that central position as the key the liqu- place of liquidity. For sure, you might launch your like NFT DAO, and you know, you might launch like a Omniflix or wherever, it doesn't matter. Stargaze is where you go to list for liquidity. Um, so I'm really, really excited about the outpost. That's coming very, very soon. Uh, ICS 721, the contracts are done. They've been audited. There's just this stupid game of NFT things, which is going to be over soon. And then we launch it. Great. Uh, and I think that that'll get over a lot of people's concerns of like, you know, I think the great thing about Stargaze and permission chains is that they should just do what they do well and like just have a really fucking great experience around that. Uh, and then let other people compose on top of them through IBC. Um, so that was like kind of that point about outposts and why I'm like excited about outposts and like, uh, and then I, I guess the, the second point was like, I've heard some really great ideas here and I'm always looking for like projects to fund. So like bring more artists or developers to Stargaze. And uh, my DMs are open. So like uh, Sunnyside, I loved your idea about an artist referral program. Let's fucking make it happen. I think that stuff's super important. So um, that's the last thing I wanted to say. And then I'm not saying anything else. Awesome. Thank you. That that idea I've been saying for months now because I, I just think it's worth trying. Um, the one thing I did want to uh, touch on real quick and the outpost I've heard 
I've heard a little bit about it, but I don't know everything about it um, or what it works on. For me personally, speaking bluntly, I'm not really concerned about other Cosmos chains. Um, I think Stargaze is first mover advantage is, you know, worth its weight in gold. I don't think it's easy to change that. I don't think another spot in Cosmos is going to overtake it. What I'm looking at is Polygon. Um, Polygon it pushed lately, right? Like there's a lot of connections between Terra and Polygon and a lot of the Terra projects went to Polygon or Stargaze. And now, you know, they got Utes coming over. And I see their CEO like in wrecked um, Discord and stuff. So I don't really consider the competition to be concerned about that within Cosmos itself. Uh, but, you know, right now, Polygon, if you're looking at it, or all right, here, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give someone a spot to talk about. Like, Joe, did one planet approach you or did you approach one planet? Uh, for that one space you did? Um, I, I tweeted something about um, Polygon just being a natural landing spot for gaming NFTs and any like microtransaction type um, utility. And I, I'm pretty sure they reached out to me, but I don't remember. Um, it, I, I think Polygon is, is just... A, you can't have small NFTs on Ethereum, right? You just can't have small collections. You know, NFT that sells 50 bucks belongs on Polygon. Polygon's drawing liquidity from even Solana, which is amazing. They're number four in volume for the month of all the blockchains. It's like uh, Ethereum 1, Solana 2, Immutable X 3, and then Polygon and Cardano are jockeying for four. Um, I, I could... What, what what signal was, or I forget who was describing, you know, a project mints on Stargaze and then their second mint is somewhere else. That that's a huge problem. But the projects are, you can't blame them. They're looking for liquidity in in the bull market. It's the opposite. The people come looking for NFTs in the bear market. The NFTs go looking for the people. Polygon just makes really smart partnerships. They're very good at what they do and just making themselves um, just kind of. I would say super professional and almost like a, a regular company, right? They just look like an internet company. They don't look like a uh, NFT marketplace or a DeFi blockchain to, from the outside looking in. That makes a humongous difference, regardless of if they're better or not than their competition. Oh, sorry. You I was saying that. that. Sorry, go ahead. Did I just not answer the question after talking for like three minutes? <laughs> no, you, you, I think they're trying to not talk over each other. So, Signal, you want to talk on that first? Yeah, sorry, Joe and I keep doing that. We're both uh, about the same age. Very polite. <laughs> um, I think that one thing for that is, yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying, that idea. You know, that like Stargaze, I think, works really well for independent artists to start. And there's that risk of them moving elsewhere and how, how do you keep them? I mean, one way is obviously just by increasing general, you know, just generally incre increasing the volume on the platform. But what are your other options that might be more subtle at this point? And I wanted to reference what you were saying before, for example, like supporting uh, uh, women from Cosmos at, uh, at NFT Fest in New York. I think that kind of thing where you're saying like, oh yeah, these are like, homegrown stargaze uh creators you know is a way that you can attach the brand of the platform to them even if you know they're representing themselves elsewhere or and so on yeah i mean i think that for like the genesis creators they could have like a one-year event it doesn't need to be in person but they could have some type of ge like genesis one-year anniversary you still have a lot of those people in the space even though a bunch of the other collections, they kind of disappeared. You have, you know, Owlies, you have Rusty is still in the NFT space from Knots. You have Maria, who's probably been involved in the most collections on Stargaze of any artist, right? And th there are definitely a couple others. Um, these little things where you kind of pat yourself on the back, I think that Stargaze could definitely d do a little bit of that. I'm not saying that they haven't done anything, but... Um, Coin, coin landing page put something in the comments about badges. There could be badges for collectors and also badges for artists as well. 
right? And um, different in, in achievements, you know, uh, Omniflix did this. And the first time I saw the badges, I was like, oh, damn, I didn't get one, you know, because I didn't, I didn't buy an NFT that month. And, and something like that could help. It's good for the culture, I think, of, of the, uh, you know, Stargaze as a whole. Um, and he's got a couple other ideas that I can't, I don't know exactly what he meant. Maybe you want to give him the mic, but uh, it's a coin landing page. Yeah, I have, I have something. I, 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 so I don't know where these thoughts like come and go, and sometimes I forget them as they as they come. But like, I think one thing that we can do better as you know people that are a part of collections on Stargaze is that you know I, I'm sure TSAS is probably a good example, and I know like women from Cosmos just had some whitelist giveaways. It's like, are we are we are we giving them to just the people that are already in the community or are we branching out? So for instance, I think it was, um, you know, in rec gang, I think I won a giveaway for, uh, for, uh, I saw, I saw actually, actually saw a PFP down there of a, of a freaking, uh, of like a, a dead pixel ghost on Hedera. I've never minted a fucking NFT in my life on Hedera. I didn't even have a Hedera wallet, but because I won a whitelist and apparently this collection's pretty, pretty solid on on hedera like i got a wallet found out what the marketplaces were and now i'm gonna you know tomorrow i'm minting a you know a dead pixel ghost on hedera and so i think some of the onus is actually on us too to make sure we're not just like you know giving all the whitelists to the people in the communities like yes we should support the people that have supported us but i think it's also important to maybe earmark some of those things to you know, outside communities. Now, whether that means you need to have a, you know, someone who's doing some of those, that outreach kind of shit and like partnering with some of these, you know, a, 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 like <laughs> Rec Gang does it interestingly because I think Rec Gang is like, we never deny a partnership. Now, you know, that could obviously come back to bite you in the ass if it ends up being like a pull, rug pull or something like that. So like, obviously there's like a level of, you know, shit that has to go on when, when you're, you know, swapping whitelist or, or whatever with different communities. But I think we, could also do a better job of making sure that we're reaching out to, you know, communities outside of Stargaze and get them interested, right? Because maybe, maybe you're going to give away 15 whitelists and, and 10 people aren't going to mint that want a whitelist, right? But, but fuck, man, if I have a good experience on Hedera, maybe I buy, you know, oh, maybe I bought, you know, 20,000 Hedera and now I have 10 left over in my wallet after my mint. What do you think I'm going to do with that? I'm certainly not going to fucking figure out a way to get it back onto a chain that I use all the time probably going to buy some other nfts so i don't know i think i think there's an opportunity there by i not only trying to lure new artists into stargaze but i think we when we do have people that we see creating collections within the stargaze ecosystem i think we really need to consider finding good partners outside of the cosmos to trade whitelists with and and kind of forge like a two-way street yeah, I'm gonna first off. I'm gonna say, uh, don't miss Dead Pixels Mint. Uh, do not miss that mint. They are an incredible community, and and one thing we did with Dead Pixels is uh, when I talked with the one of the founders, Will, he he gave us some whitelist, and what we did is we we gated it, so we token gated it for a giveaway. So you had to own a Space Skelly to get uh, access to the whitelist giveaway. And a lot of people, like you said, from Hedera, Vice, you know, Flip Flop, they came to Stargaze and had to learn how to set up Kepler and go through the process. Uh, so I agree a thousand percent. We've been doing that with some smaller ETH collections. Um, and it definitely, you'd be surprised how many collections on a smaller scale that are actually looking for you to reach out to them as well. Uh, we all sometimes think people don't want nothing to do with Stargaze or Cosmos, but a lot of those projects, if you just get with a good person or, or team, they would love your whitelist as long as you can walk them yeah. through on how to set up a Kepler. Yeah, exactly. Like how many people are going to say, no, I don't want to be on a whitelist and, you know, probably get a cheaper price and, you know, guaranteed mint. Like, especially if it's like an established project, right? Like who probably didn't want, a, you know, a, a, a TSOS, I think, just minted, right? Or right like and that was i think most of their mint was the whitelist right like yeah they uh, they crushed it they 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 had like 85 percent minted through on the whitelist it's pretty wild yeah and so one thing that i'm actually looking interested in doing and and i just haven't had the time but it's on my list um 
is like so with the squids that we did like i was curious to see so the deal was with umi we had 200 whitelist spots and so umi got 100 of them and then cosmos spaces got the other 100 and i i'm very curious i want to do some on-chain sleuthing and figure out like if any of those um umi people that we airdropped them to like did they did were they involved in stargaze before did they buy anything after and so i think that'll be a nice little like kind of uh post post mint mortem uh for the squids to kind of see like did did that like little partnership slash arrangement like did that benefit stargaze in any way and i mean i'm sure umi could do the same thing right like did it did it inspire anyone to go buy umi or whatever um or at least like you know click through and like see what it was all about Right. Um, Because that's I I mean, that's the thing I think we should be striving for now is not like, oh, make number go up or or whatever. Or uh, I think it's more about like just bringing new eyeballs to Stargaze. Like, how do we most efficiently do that? Uh, And and what things can we do to to enable that? But but yeah, I am excited to admit my pixel, my dead pixel ghost tomorrow. So uh, one thing about that, that. you should definitely figure out a way to go do it because I wasn't going to do it. And then I, I finally, I looked, I found a, like a Hedera uh, marketplace and I was like, holy shit, these things are going for like 10 X the freaking mint price or the mint price. So <laughs> yeah, they're a great, that. great collection. If you guys know anything about dead pixels, just speaking with uh, one of the founders, great collection. So not trying to blow smoke up them, but they, uh, they're great people. And I hope you get a good one tomorrow. Yeah. And they were very helpful in the discord getting me all set up because it's essentially like, I had to be onboarded into that ecosystem. So I think that's like my, my message from all of that is we should be trying to do some of that. And maybe we are, maybe some, some collections are, but I think we need to be more cognizant and, and strive to make sure that, you know, we get some, and I know that Stargaze and I see Bonzi has his hand up. Um, I know we're doing some things to maybe make the number of whitelists a little bit more flexible. Um, and I think that could probably help, help too. Before we uh, before we cut change topics, uh, I gotta ask you one question. Did you check out the smart the smart bot inside of their Discord? Dude, Did you check that? Yes. out? <laughs> smart bot in the freaking Dead Pixels Discord is probably the coolest. An AI thing. bot, yeah, yeah. They are like it's genius. Yeah, it's really freaking dope. Um, okay, well, yeah. So yeah, as you guys know, check out uh, Dead Pixels and great project doing different things. And I do. Uh, we haven't let. Uh, I know Joe asked me to bring him up. Coin landing page. Let's let you speak real quick, and then we can hop to Bonzi and then Joe. Hey there. Yeah, just wanted to say, um, totally agree with the projects. Uh, should be reaching out to different communities. That's kind of uh, to set up partnerships. That's kind of marketing 101. But what uh, Stargaze themselves could do is like kind of re- uh, um, release. Uh, sorry if I'm a little bit speaking weird it's the middle of the night here um if uh they could release their own collection of badges in, in form of nfts and then later this might be uh something that interchain accounts could use uh, make use from or uh in different ways like the, you could let me just uh look back at what i wrote um like the the nft collections could be earned through reaching achievements or making referrals they could eventually uh, communities could collaborate with stargaze themselves for special occasion badges uh stuff like this okay so i think this is actually a good time for me to get feedback on this um can you guys still hear me right now yes sir okay okay so with and th- that badges part that will come into this so I'm going to ask you guys to bear with me for the first part of this talk real quick, because I know as soon as I say it, a lot of people would groan. Um, So they were looking at the possibility of crew three, but without the like repetitiveness of it. um, Some of the ideas were like the one time quest would be like join Twitter, uh, join or follow Twitter, Discord, Telegram, Reddit, Medium. like read fact read a like click a link to read a tutorial on how to like get kepler installed um stuff like that um then like bigger points would be like refer a project to be featured and then rewards could be either stars it could be and it depends on like you know 
what is what are we expecting people to do if we want people just to learn about the platform it wouldn't be stars but if we're trying to actively get people to refer others then are the reward stars or a unique discord role with an icon or a badge that's made by stargaze you know that is handed out to the uh, some of the leaderboards or it could be uh, nfts like a nft collection that is made by stargaze uh, itself or something of the sorts general feedback on that i know i said crew three in there and i i personally hate crew three but i'm just giving a heads up on that so thoughts on that yeah so go ahead I, yeah so uh my biggest like hesitation of doing a collection for me was the follow-up right like keeping people's attention especially in a bear is 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 difficult right because the only it's it's like almost like a cycle right like uh pre-mint you mint the hype the post mint like you know bump and then what do you do you figure out something or you launch another collection right so how do you how do you kind of break that cycle but so when we did the squids i was like i don't want to do it as a discord because there's nothing like anything that we need to disseminate i'll figure out a different way to disseminate it and so we kind of just settled on a crew three that like nothing like where you have to come and like, you know, water the plant every freaking day. But like, if you check it once a week, like that's enough to keep engaged or to like drop some announcements or to like support other people's things that are going on. Like, Hey, go listen to this space. Cause you know, Umi's doing a, you know, a, t- like tomorrow Umi's doing a, you know, a thing with uh, the Akash guys. Right. And so that's like a quest or I think like listening to this round table was a quest. Like things like that, not none of these like just pure engagement farming, like you need to come and retweet five things a day and like these posts and comment on this. I think it gets to be so like overwhelming. Uh, so I think as long as it's done, I think with the right amount of like light touch, I think th- things like that could be really good for like almost like an onboarding tool, right? Like you have almost like a like a checklist, like you were saying, like these are the accounts you should follow. Here, go watch this YouTube video on how to freaking, you know, set up a Kepler. And then, oh, by the way, here's the advanced one for if you want to figure out how to use Stargate Studio, here's some other, you know, resources. So I think having all the resources in one spot, like, would be useful. Um, but as long as it doesn't become like a job, like, oh, I have to go check this every day, because if I don't get all my points, then I'm going to drop out of the top 25, and then I'm not going to be eligible for shit. So I think if you're doing it from more of like a, I'll say a wholesome engagement instead of engagement farming. Uh, I I think to me, I feel like that that's, it's not that much of a job. Right. But. Yeah. And we're trying to like, the thought is keep basically that Twitter farming thing completely out of it. There would be like maybe one or two like per season uh, quests possibly, but for the most part, like non nothing that is, uh, that wears on the user. Anyone else have comments to help uh, Bonzi? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, I, I don't, uh, I don't personally, I don't really use like, uh, I don't like the quest formats that much. I know they, they do work. Um, but within that, I wonder, I don't know if you've thought about it, but like some kind of premiere event uh, i don't know if you would maybe associate it with the anniversary of stargaze or something but my thoughts like onboarding people would be really cool like okay if i'm onboarding on a platform if i see that there's like more than three steps i'm i'm not interested you know same with like airdrops if it's like oh i have to do five things i just I, i'm out um but like it would be really cool. I don't know how you get the addresses or how you how exactly you do this. But for me, I think it would be really cool if there was like, let's say, a poster of that had like a contribution from each of like the top Stargaze artists, maybe the top twenty five from the last year. And this was like they're all duplicates, or maybe you had some variants of them. Uh, this this kind of NFT that. I don't know, some would be dropped to the community and then maybe you'd have them like that as a thing that people could, you know, connect if they made a Kepler and made a new address, they could grab it. I don't know exactly how you do it, but 
some kind of thing where it's like an invitation to the community. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that showcases, you know, what, what we have to offer. And then also uh, provide something, provides people something interesting, very easy, you know? Uh, so I do know, like, we're looking at free mints and, like, with no gas fees, um, you don't need to learn how to get stars over as long as you have, like, a wallet that, like, you know, you make a Kepler wallet. You don't even need to know how to use it, right? You just need to make one then you can do a free mint. So that's something similar to that, I would say, where it's like uh, basically install this and technically onboarded. Yeah, you're completely right. That that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, you just do a free mint. And then, um, but yeah, it'd be cool if it was something that was like included a bunch of projects. And then maybe you did it on the other side where you try to incentivize them to promote it on, on different platforms or, or try to bring, bring people on board. So I know they have the like ETH bridge, right? Where you can airdrop uh, Ethereum collection uh, stars and then they can have a whitelist on Stargaze. Uh, but like that's been in development for a while. But like my biggest thing with that is you still need to reach that project. And that's like the hard part. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you can airdrop a community for the most part they're not going to care unless the project that they're loyal to cares. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, a little bit off, like not, not quite a direct like response to that. I, I'd have to think more about how can you get other people involved like willingly? Um, yeah. Cause for I, me, I think that what I, what I'm trying to get at is like, how do you align interests, the interest of the platform, the interest of the creators, and then the interests of, of, you know, potential new users, basically. And so, yeah, I don't know the, the exact solution, but something like that where, like, projects could somehow get their own community excited about it. They could use it to promote themselves on other platforms. And then it brings people to Stargaze. Sure. Something I thought of a while ago, and I only brought it up to one creator, but, you know, if, if let's say Bonzi signal traders, they know that in the month of March, they're all going to have an NFT mint. Um, there should be an option on Stargaze to do a free mint or a very, very inexpensive mint to mint tokens that are the whitelist. Right. So maybe in the month of March, those three projects are minting. They get together. They say, OK, we're going to mint 500 whitelist tokens. If you have this token in your wallet, you're 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 a whitelist minter for all three projects. These would trade on the secondary market. Right. These would definitely trade, even if it's for, you know, 50 stars or 100 stars. I know it takes planning and a lot of coordination. And every time I talk to an artist, it's like they never know when they're minting until like two weeks before or seven days before. I think this is something that would definitely work. It doesn't need to be organized by Stargaze. It's a creator thing. Um, it would probably be better if experienced artists were able to coordinate just because they, they've gone through the process and they could pinpoint their minting date far ahead of time probably. But I don't know what you guys think about that. Oh, I'll jump in quick and say I love that. Uh, one, I hate the whitelist process. I really do. I would love to get rid of that. And second, um, right now, I don't know if anyone notices this or not, but like whitelist is just handed out like candy anymore. Like it's not really worth anything 99% of the time. Um, doing like a free mint where you get to keep it limited, that brings value back into the whitelist. And then more importantly, as a creator, that's valuable to me because now I know the people who end up with the whitelist, they value the collection and they wanted it. It's not just random, you know, addresses that one from 50 Twitter giveaways. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to bring that up because I love that idea. I mean, Stargaze could just airdrop, you know, or, or sell for the minimum a thousand whitelist tokens or whatever, 5,000 whitelist tokens. And those tokens are good for the month. Any project that wants to utilize those tokens, they just have to kind of turn that option on when they 
when they begin to mint, right? Something, something like that. It could, I, I don't know how hard this is to do. I'm just saying from the, from the customer's perspective, I think that would be uh, convenient definitely. And also you could gamify it a little bit and you could, I think those would trade on the secondary market. Yeah, no, you've already convinced me. <laughs> I, I, no, I love that idea. I haven't thought of that. I think I, I told Signal when I when I found out Signal was going to be on the space. I'm like, oh, good. He's like the only person, maybe like one of two people that really understands me as a person. Bonzi, you might be the other person because I always agree with you and I have fringe uh, ideas. So it's because we, 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 we both go to the grocery store. We both do the shopping for our houses and we love coupons, right? So. Yeah, <laughs> shit, man. You definitely you definitely know me. Uh, raccoon or traders? Yeah, and uh, before we sw- switch subject, I just wanted to point out we didn't talk uh, about Stash, but uh, if you guys uh, added up there, uh, maybe like I think it's they started doing this like back in December 2022, and basically like you have like these badges every day that you can claim for free and doesn't cost anything with gas or stuff like that. But the other thing that they added that you guys a bit discussed about is like when you mint something on Stash, and if you create something on Stash, you're gonna gather these creator points or these Stash points. That for example, Stash points they add something uh, back in the days, which is. Like basically, like Joe said, you, they're just gamifying like what you can do on the platform. So when you accumulate stash points, you could participate into uh, some sort of lottery that you could win like a thousand bucks and stuff like that. So, and the other thing that I find very interesting is when you get on their site, like you have the what they call top stashers. So you see that the people have a lot of like stash points and trader points, and you see these people. You just go in their profile. You see, okay, they, they, this guy minted this thing and he created this NFT. So I feel like they're aiming more of like they're touching some sort of like a social platform where you go, you mint your NFT, you see what people are minting and what they created. I feel like this is like. I don't know. For me, like it's much more interesting to just go in one place, have all this information, and see what people are doing, than having like all these multiple websites where you have to gather the information. So it's pretty cool what they're doing these days. Oh yeah, I, like as soon as I first started, I said you should just replicate Stash's website. It's interesting. They have the free badges. It's an incentive to come back to the website. Um, you know, it's not a, you click on the website, you see what's featured, you click mint or don't and leave. They have trending, they have like the points. It, it keeps the user engaged and gives them like reasons to stay on the website, look around and explore. Uh, so a hundred percent agreed. Yeah. And I, I find it pretty cool that, you know, it's, everything is social at the end of the day. And if you're seeing these people that are minting cool stuff and you see them on the front page, you're for sure gonna look their profile and see what they're minting, what they're selling. So this thing is very, like, for me, I feel it very interesting. <clears throat> Tridors, you got your hands up, what's up? Yeah, just a couple of points I wanted to add. Um, I think the idea of like uh, creating like a token for whitelist that's tradable on the market is a really cool idea. Um, you know, especially going back to this whole like, stargaze is going to roll out like a dex feature you know i in a way like i don't want those to be nfts because i don't want my like wallet when i go on to stargaze i don't want to see like a clutter of all the whitelists that i got necessarily although it could be that but i think if we if we were to basically tokenize the whitelist and you know let's say you had a thousand whitelist spots to give away you just token you created a token like via like a token factory for a thousand spots and then you distributed them and they were able to be, you know, I guess, held, sold, whatever. Like, that would be an interesting um, mechanism for, I guess, doing the whitelist. Um, so that was the first thing. And then the second thing is, yeah, I think that, you know, Stargaze could do a little bit more, like, gamification. You know, uh, giving out, like, points for, um, you know, if, you, if you're if you minting um certain kinds of projects if you're on the whitelist and you actually use your whitelist mints you could get bonus points stuff like that because you know i think that there's a lot of people right now who like they um you know they they sit there watching the whitelist and they're like "Hmm, you know i'll see if it's if it's worth it or not they they, like you said whitelist get handed out kind of like candy these days so like it doesn't have that same value but if there was like a gamified thing for on a greater level from stargaze that was like bringing value to like actually using your whitelist spots, it would create, you know, 
uh, and another line of uh, incentives for people to actually use it. You know, can I, can I just chime in on that as well about people using or not using the whitelist? I, I, I give out a lot of whitelists for different projects pretty much every week. I'm giving out like five to 10. What I started doing was using a Google form to do it. So I have a Google form. I drop it in my telegram. Hey, first 10 people or first five people, you're on the whitelist. But I'm not sure if they're actually, I'm pretty sure they're minting because they're going through the trouble of, um, of, of doing it. But how, how can you, no, like, all right, I'm giving out all these whitelists to the same person. They're not minting. Would this be easier knowing the address or is it easier knowing the NFT? Because then maybe I'm sure eventually there's going to be tiered whitelists, right? So maybe there'll be different tiers for people who always use their whitelist token or something like that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. Exactly that. I mean, you. I think you'd be surprised how many people will go through the trouble of getting the whitelist. Because if the whitelist phase picks up, and, and this is just my personal experience, like if it is going fast, like take humans, right? Like that thing jumped up really fast. So then, you know, you want to be on there so that like you can be one of the people who gets it. But if it doesn't move fast in that first, you know, mm. portion of the whitelist phase, like you're going to second guess mint, minting. And then it's a snowball effect. If you don't mint, then the, the progression bar doesn't go up you know, that extra percent. And then the next person's like, well, nobody else is minting. And like, then it just, you know, snowballs into a negative way. I, I just wanted to add another thing about, I mean, yeah, like not doing away with whitelists, but this idea of some kind of token that you mint that could be applied to several projects. Another way that could be applied is for these projects that, you know, the current system on Stargaze is like, you can, if you lower your price, you can get re-featured, um, which I think may be like a little bit confusing sometimes when like a project pops back up and it's not actually clear for the user that it's like cheaper, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, like if, for- if you just had the ability to, sorry, so I'm thinking, so if, if this token existed, you could like discount your project versus it, right? So you could put the competition on on the, on the project side just you mean, you, you right. mean um projects who want to stay on the launch pad longer rather than just yeah, being up there for, yeah. and so if it, it was something that you like i'm not sure how you would do it exactly but if if i could hypothetically i okay signal our next our next project doesn't sell right uh and then over time there's there's like this this token that people can use and we can we can discount versus it if that makes sense so like we could say okay it's it's a it's a 20 percent discount for now and then we can go okay now it's at 30 percent. now it's a 50 percent yada yada so like it, it will allow you know what i mean it would, it would like put competition on the uh, on the project side for how much they uh valued that discount yeah i mean i'm i'm all for that i i I think sometimes it's hard to know what's going on on the launch pad, to be honest with you. Like I go on there and sometimes the same projects up there for three, four weeks, even though they minted out already, you know? So um, I, I would like to see like a featured, a new, and then something like you described like a second chance or a last chance or, or whatever for, for, for a discount. If I did catch that the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. See, so, yeah, we, we 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 definitely are on the same page. Me, you, Bonzi. Yeah, and I do want to say on that <clears throat> tiered whitelist, that was something that we we really pushed um, Stargaze to do it, and they they told me it was going to be done. Like when we had talked with Stargaze, they're like, "Yeah, we might have it done by your mint." They're like this is kind of what they told us, and it's still not done. And we minted however long ago. So uh, tiered whitelist is definitely needed. We had to do a whole. All, we had to have two scripts written that would kick back stars based off of your tier because people would fight for those whitelists within your Discord because we had a, uh, a Discord economy we built where it was, uh, they're called Space Fuels. And this, is, this would be similar to something you could do on-chain. But people start to really compete for these tokens uh, and then they can get their whitelist. And they're serious whitelists. It's just not like candy that's thrown out like you guys were saying. Uh, but I really think once tiered whitelist comes comes into the the loop and people can start to use it, it'll be something that people 
seriously go out of their way to get if they really want that project. Also, from a founder, you can see the demand. Like if people really aren't going for that higher whitelist, your demand may not be where you want it. So it may give you a better perspective of you might might need to do something different for the marketing or whatever you're doing. Um, but I see your hands up, Joe. What's up? I, I was going to say you could that that would also drive secondary market volume because what I'm imagining is this. Let's say um, you know Sunnyside's going to release their 27th collection on Stargaze, right? They can they could have like two t- two different whitelists. One whitelist could be that special whitelist token that gets given out for whatever. You know, a hundred people get this token. If you're not going to mint, you could sell it on the secondary market, but you get 30% discount, let's say. And then let's say the next tier is just anybody who has a Sunnyside Reaper asset in their wallet, they get a 10% discount on the mint. A lot of mints like that won't even go to public mint. And it might make people think, oh, well, I was going to buy a Sunnyside Reaper anyway. Let me just buy it now because then I could mint on the second tier of the whitelist in case it doesn't go public. These, these things... It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's gamified, but also you're, you're, you need to have a way to add value to collections that are already in circulation and attributing value to them is not that hard, but it needs to be deliberate. Or like some sort of way of pre-selling, right? Like I know my collection is coming out next month and I want to sell 10% of it to my really fucking, you know, people that are whales or whatever the case may be that have been very supportive. Like you could pre-sell them and then, you know, obviously some way of airdropping them or whatever at or or how about every every nft collection is like oh we have this partnership this partnership this partnership no you don't you make the partnership that if if i'm minting a sunny side reaper if i have a skelly or a sunny side reaper in my wallet i get on the whitelist right that would be a partnership to me where it's like actual value value add yeah we did that with we did that with tsas and you're right it created it helps both projects and it's not hard to do you literally just that's all you gotta do just reach out. And I agree. As the only NFT project here, I think that gave whitelists to to the Joes, the original Joes. I, I agree completely about uh, that uh, cross project. Um, yeah, I mean, what what I'm thinking from like a user perspective is it would be great if people were scrolling down instead of like whitelist. You know what I mean? Whether you're on the whitelist or not. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just thinking of that. I don't know if it's a better system, but it'd be kind of cool if it was like, I guess it's a sub- subscription thing, right? So I have Stargaze Red, and because I have that, it's like, it gives me 100 buys for this month or something, right? And then when I'm scrolling down, I'm looking at, you know, the first one, the second one, and it's like, okay, this one, it gives me 50% off. The next one, it gives me 30% off. And then those are all the, the choice of the projects. Right. Like, so they choose how much discount they're going to give based on that, uh, that intermediary token, I guess it would be. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of ways that we can, we could do it. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's, I'm trying to think of if you did a, a subscription. Uh, yeah. That'd be something you could just a different avenue, but does that then, I don't know. I don't know my I, thoughts I, on that at the moment. Well, I think you, I think you, I think you like, your NFT guys are way too nice to your customers. Honestly, I think uh, you know you're giving out all these whitelists. Uh, I think you need to approach something more like the waitlist. Um, so you know you get them to submit. Uh, you know they say, "Hey, I want I want to join. I want to I want to be part of this collection. Uh, I'm really interested." And then they submit it, and then they just wait, and then you've already got their money. And then, you know, you mint it for them when you have time. Yeah. A wait, a wait list. I've seen who did, who did something? I think, uh, wrecked gang a while back did some, I don't know what they did. Something like that where you, you like had an application you filled out or something and, uh, and then they reached back to you. But, uh, yeah. Who else, uh, traders? What's up? Well, I think an interesting option on this would be like if you basically created a like a a team's token swap or like you were selling, like let's say you had different tiers. Um, and one of the things about whitelist too is like sometimes people will miss a whitelist period 
um but like the collection isn't gone but then like we dealt with this too like you know how long do you make the whitelist phase like if you make it you know really short a few hours like some people might sleep through it or miss it or be working or whatever if you make it too long like then you know it really draws out it becomes um kind of uh it can impact your mint negatively because it's just like the, the period between when you start your mint and when you end it is really too long or when you go to public is too long. I think an interesting option there would be like if you could pre-mint or if you could sell tokens that had like a, they were all redeemable uh, one-to-one for uh, an NFT as long as there was NFTs available and you could sell them at different prices. So like let's say um, – Every like I said, every token is worth. And let's say you want to have multiple kind of like price points. You could say like my white, my top whitelist, they get, a, they can buy a token from me for twenty, and they can buy like two tokens max. And then my second whitelist, like they could buy tokens from me for thirty, you know, and then or whatever or twenty five, right? And then you could sell a certain number of tokens, and they would be redeemable at any point during the mint for an, one of the NFTs as long as it hadn't been sold out. So the person could like wait, like maybe there's somebody who wants to like wait and use one of their redeems until like the later part of the mint. Like some people think that's be- better luck for them, right? They don't need to mint during that like short time period in the initial phase. That would be an interesting application. Um, Signal, do you have a comment? So NFT futures is what you're describing. <laughs> I mean, essentially, but while we're on the topic of like taking DeFi and turning it into like uh, NFT stuff, I was just thinking, and like, I haven't really thought this out too far, but um, who remembers like liquidity bootstrapping protocols um, or or pools or whatever those are called? Um, It was like a way of funding tokens where like, basically you had um, like an initial price point and people would basically like buy in at a price point they thought the token was worth it. That would be a really unique. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that done for NFTs. But like, if you were to basically, you know, be able to, um, like, create bins and say like the the certain rarities, and if people were able to see like, okay, there's this percentage of rare, you know, there's this percentage of normal, this percentage of whatever in each bin, and they could they could like ape at prices that made sense for them. Some people might come in and they go, hey, that that first price point is like. 10 times you know or whatever but like it also is a guaranteed rare and i'm willing to jump for a guaranteed rare you know like that that would be a really interesting protocol and then some people might wait and they just go i only would just want to i'm like a floor sweeper i'd rather wait until it gets to that like lowest possible price point and i'm gonna take 50 of them yeah that's, i think that's um I think Passage did something similar with their first town mint. I, I wasn't a part of it, but there was definitely like a floating uh, price throughout the mint. Okay, so I guess it has been done. I'm not as cool well, as I, think someone as I thought. About, someone just posted something about the ability to do like like Dutch uh, Dutch, Dutch ovens, Dutch auctions. Um, <laughs> Are you a, true? That's twice today. The, 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 earlier it was like butt fuck or butt stuff, and now it's Dutch ovens. It, come on, man. You backed up, man. I'm just feeling a type of way, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. Anyways, I mean, I as you were saying. Whether it would be a third party thing or something that Stargaze would like build and offer, you know, as, as part of the platform, I think that would be a really unique way for NFT projects to go through the mint. And um, I think that could be a, a unique way to attract, you know, new volume, new interest from new creators. Um, you know, if, if that, like, if there's a new form of mint that doesn't exist elsewhere, that could be a really interesting way to like approach some of these projects, especially like big projects coming from, um, other ecosystems, you know, for them, they, they already know they have a high floor price. They have a lot of demand, like that could really attract some, some like whale activity to come over people who are going to like set those high bids who are going to jump in the pool early for a guaranteed rare you know because they know the power of this collection on a different blockchain um and that could be a really interesting way to to attract you know different creators and, and more liquidity you know what i'd love with that kind of thing i mean i i was kind of mentioning before the idea of lending to projects like before they launch which you know it's it's there's some overlap there, right? With like uh, um, LSB, um, but I think I think that um, 
it would be really cool. Yeah, if you had some kind of thing, I don't know, where pre-mint, I don't know, you had like different projects kind of bidding and betting on, maybe I'm getting too corporate here, uh, but like shark tanking, these uh, <laughs> these projects that are, uh, that are about to come in would be kind of so, fun. I don't know. But. Um, to speak on the idea of like, doing some sort of betting system it definitely could not come from the platform itself um so it'd have to be something made by a different project or community team um uh, another thing about like lending projects to actually launch one of the ideas that i had brought up i haven't posted yet on commonwealth and the only reason it hasn't been posted is because we haven't agreed but basically just taking uh funds from the community pool to cover uh launch pad uh costs for uh some creators probably featured only and more so those that originate outside of the ecosystem uh specifically like one of one creators right they hear random guys say go make money here but pay 85 dollars first and they're like well i'm not gonna do that i only have you know, five to 10 pieces to sell. Um, so, and this puts zero sell pressure on the coin, right? Because it's covering their launch costs, which then half of it gets burned and half of it goes back to the community pool. So it's like taking money out, but it's not uh, putting any sell pressure on the system at all. Yeah, I love and that. that. I think to that's piggyback awesome. off, Sorry, to piggyback off that, I... You have a discussion up on Commonwealth, and it's to reduce Stargaze's mint fees from 10 to 5%. Uh, Stargaze is currently the most expensive marketplace, uh, not the most, but one of the most expensive marketplaces to launch on. So um, we've put that up there, and not many know this, but uh, new collections are charged 10% of their mint plus uh, 3,000 stars, which 3,000 stars isn't much. But for instance, today, humans made $100,000 on their mint. So they were charged 10 k for that, you know. Uh, just something we can do for, you know, everyone wants to go into the whole listing fees and stuff. But this is ways new projects could afford to maybe bring on a team or maybe uh, help with marketing because they have less upfront cost. 5% isn't a crazy amount. But if we're really here for creators, it starts there. Um, so if you guys want go throw it out there, we put some, you know, whatever discuss. And I do see berserkers in here. Berserker, what's up? Yeah. Just before he speaks, I just wanted to say that as soon as you said his name before that, he was missing, not even 15 seconds later, he joined. So, uh, <laughs> for the sneaky little rats in, in the spaces, well done. Uh, I didn't even know he mentioned my name. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, so, I have no idea. Oh my god. Hey Jay. Hey Rama, how you doing? Uh love the spaces. I guess if you want me, I can comment on your last point on the fee, right? The ten percent fee, which is significant. It ramps up, right? Like uh if you're you mentioned T SAS, that's ten thousand dollars that could have went to their pocket, but it's going I guess, you know, it's being burned and going back to the community pool. It's not like the Stargaze team makes money, but it's still money out of the founder's pockets. Uh, 10% is, is not the highest fee, though, if you're looking at launch pads. You want to launch on One Planet or Magic Eden. Uh, that's the fee you'll pay. But then again, these launch pads take care of everything for you. They give you marketing. They have some advisors, right? Um, so you're kind of getting some value in a return for that 10% compared to here where you kind of have to do it yourself, yourself minting, basically. So you, ooh, it, it, it is expensive in that sense, but not the most expensive. You, you can pay way more than that. Like we've already paid 30%. Uh, for dev work for some of our mints because we wanted some fancy smart contracts. So I guess it all depends. Um, I agree. It, it feels a little bit expensive, but I think that's kind of the cost of having the Stargaze token 
um, or, or the Stargaze ecosystem, that's like the main driver of value is these mints. So um, I don't know, like, I, I don't know if this is the way or they should rework the tokenomics. I think Joe posted a Twitter on that, but uh, 10% is pricey, but it's not the worst is all I wanted to say here. So yeah, the it, hold on. Who, who did you talk to at Magic Eden? They told I literally talked with them two days ago, and they told us five percent. So oh, Magic, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. You well, talk I, with? they're pushing right now. Right now, it's a special offer, right? Because uh, they want projects to mint on Polygon. But I assure you that you know, ten percent is definitely something that they they'll charge you on on Soul, and uh, yeah, same for yeah, Luart. Yeah back on the days we paid 10 percent for luart and and they even had like some projects pay 15 if they wanted aston's expertise which we did right. not want <laughs> so, <laughs> see aston he gave skeleton punks you know what well, don't even go down that path but they were giving us five percent magic eden told us five percent and one planet told us 2.5 percent so oh damn one planet really yeah uh, one planet told us yeah, two well, you, 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 ej i don't know you got better negotiating skills i guess i'm a sucker and i got all the high rates you know also so, yeah but yeah truly wrecked speaking okay. on that though we don't really care what other people are doing we care what brings in liquidity if we can cut our like other platforms the fee they take is helping fund the team Stargaze as a platform, realistically, we don't really care if we charge a fee, in my mind. Like, it's not helping keeping the platform alive. It's not going to the team. So there is zero reason for us to charge a higher fee. If we can be more competitive, we don't really care if the average is 10%. Because now we can have an advantage versus other people. So I say, I mean, lower. The, it doesn't hurt development. It doesn't slow I, anything down. I mean, Bonzi, like technically, the, it should be free because you're, yeah. you know, almost free because basically people are doing the work themselves. That's why these launch pads are, are are charging is because they're offering marketing and it's time and they're like an enterprise. But in this case, the protocol runs itself at, at this point, right? Like you're not assisting anyone on their minting process like there's a spaces <laughs> like how you you just drag off um no i mean you're not wrong um but you're right i like i would have no issues with it being free realistically like yeah it helps burn goes back to stakers but to me honestly it doesn't matter because what matters is getting more people in more so than anything later on you know if it's thriving Sure, you can put the like feedback up. Um, and then just small comment, we are starting to help out uh, the creators more beyond just that space. Uh, we're helping out with the contract upload for artists that are not familiar with the platform, um, helping introduce them to people in the space as they come around. That's like a very, very recent change, but we're getting a little bit more in there. But again, fees do not go to the team. So I think a lower fee just makes sense. Is that not in place just because like it's we're, we're talking about a matter of scale here, in my opinion, like not, not the service provided or what it's worth uh, when you're listing on Stargaze versus other platforms. But like, it's like pretty obvious that a very small, uh, low volume platform is probably going to charge where they, where they can uh for their first year and th those will you know drop as as the platform grows like there's a it's, i don't know to me it just sounds like we're talking about a scaling thing you're comparing it to much larger platforms that uh, they can charge for free and sure you can try to be competitive uh no. on, on that front no problem but but you know what i mean like it's like it's like yeah does the local uh local grocer charge a little bit more than uh walmart it's like yeah because of associated fees and just me from the outside guessing maybe that as a smaller platform uh, there's more fees or, or you yeah. know what i mean they, they have more uh, uh cost but no the fees don't cover any cost it doesn't go to the team that's why that doesn't matter um yeah all, all the funds go to the community pool and then 
that comes down to what we we're talking about, like what can be, you know, back to have an allocated chart, like where are these funds going? Cause right now they're being, these collections are minting and nothing happened. Like these funds just are taken from the collections and nothing's done with them. That's it. So yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to talk about. Well, on what if, what if they were going to use to, to supply liquidity somewhere? Better than what's happening right now. I would be but, open to that. Yeah. And, and but to me, it's not a matter of, of whether it goes to the team. Sorry, I wasn't, I, I hope you didn't get me wrong there. I wasn't trying to imply that it's going directly to the team. But as a smaller competitor in, in this space, right, you sort of try to accrue uh, revenue where you can, right? Whether that's going to all the people, whether it's going to team or anything like that. Your mic is covered up. Yeah, so I think I think his mic's covered up. But yeah, it's it's not revenue for the platform. Stargaze can't do anything with it. Are you talking to me? I know that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what that's what Bonzi was saying. And yeah. his mic's covered up. <laughs> so, yeah. Berserk, I see your hand up. Sorry. Yeah, that's kind of the the issue. I guess I agree with you, EJ, and and um, that was a deciding factor for us. Oh, you know. It, it was like one, we wanted to have multi-chain NFTs, which, you know, kind of, you know, the smart contracts on Stargaze, but this was a really big one for us was the fact that we wanted to pay our devs, um, which we pay handsomely. And then plus we had to pay 10% to Stargaze. So if we're paying, you know, like 15% to our devs, plus an extra 10 to Stargaze for xyz we don't even know where how that money is used that's like 25 percent. that's like a big premium on a project that is raising you know over 100k that ends up you know it's a significant amount that we're losing just because we want to mint on stargaze and and so basically we moved to juno because there there isn't that premium so you know keep that in mind that for bigger scale projects 10 percent like tsas humans that's 10 grand what if you get like a 200k mint, right? Like that's 20 grand you're taking out of their pockets for hard to justify what, right? So I think I agree with EJ there. Well, and that makes perfect sense, right? Because we're, we're talking about the like where interests align or disalign, right? And so for a platform that's smaller, there's going to be more friction with a project like yours that's bigger, right? Yeah, they're, they're so big. They're featured on Loop right now. I'm looking at the website. <laughs> yeah, you're I think jealous, he was talking man. to you, Berserker. You're just jealous. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, that was that's a good point. And and these are, as I said, this is why I just put it up for discussion. I'm absolutely open to feedback and and what's going to happen. And this is only way change happens is by us bringing up this topic and and how we can better everything. Um, but yeah, I. I don't want to get, I know we're, we're way deep into this space is, uh, what are we over hour and a half now, hour and 45 minutes. Is there any topics that the panel would like to discuss or run through uh, berserker? I see your hand up. What's up? Yeah, I joined late. So I'm like, I I'm super into it. You guys are probably tired. So, uh, y'all talk about open editions. Cause I'm really excited about free mints and open editions on stargaze. It's the super meta right now on Eve, and y'all mentioned on how you'd like to bring you know some cool artists to, to Stargaze. That there's already some cool artists on Stargaze, uh, but but kind of working in a different mint format. And the open edition can definitely allow for that gamification, as well as raising funds in a. I don't want to call it organic, but kind of like supply and demand, right? Like you mint the amount of mints you want to do and the artist is really happy people are very aware of what they're buying in and how many mints have happened so and it's and it's the meta so you know people like kind of following some of these trends and I'd, it'd be nice to have that feature on stargaze as well i don't know if you talked about it honestly i don't know enough to speak on it so could you Either did, did you guys know what he's talking about? Maybe I'm just I'm probably the okay, one that's I'll, living I'll, under a know, rock. I'll describe it real quick. Basically, there is this token uh, 
that you mint, suppose it's a nice art piece that everybody likes that was made by a famous artist. And you charge 100 stars for it. And you can mint as many as you want. The only restriction is you have to mint within 24 hours. So the supply can be infinity, or it can be as little as, you know, two tokens, right? Like if only two people know about this, there's only two mints. So, you know, it kind of gets to an organic balance. If you see like, oh, there's a thousand minted already, like I'm not going to mint, you know, that, <laughs> that guy made enough money. And if there's like 500, you're like, oh, maybe I'll mint a few more. And afterwards, people gamify it. So, you know, maybe you burn three of these open editions. That's why they called open because there's no supply cap. Uh, maybe you get some different artwork. So there's a way of gamifying it as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, Joe, that makes you sense. know what I'm talking about, right? I'm a big fan of timed mints where the supply is dictated by just how many people mint. I, I participated in one of those. It was a 24 hour mint, and you know, I mint on a Friday night. And then I'm, I'm happy. Then the next morning I wake up, I'm like, oh, I, I got to mint another one. And then I ended up minting like four. It was like a, it was, that, that that mint that I that I was in, they raised like like six or seven million dollars in twenty four hours with that mint. It was it was massive, and it was uh, it, it's it incentivized the team to actually do marketing, commu actual community building because they know that whatever they get in that first twenty four hours could be thirty days, but twenty four hours is it, it creates urgency, and they have to make sure that they make meaningful partnerships that they do all the you know the twitter spaces and the 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 discord telegram all that stuff so I, i'm a big fan of that i like it i gotta ask um was it a project on eth that you did because there was a project we just did like uh our team minted a, a lot of like i didn't know that's what this collect like, like this is what's called open edition or whatever i just experienced that and loved it as well what was the collection that you minted I'm not gonna say because the last time I said this, uh, people put my face put my face on <laughs> okay, NFTs. Okay, okay, so, uh, fair, uh, fair uh, enough. The Killer Bears one was it? The Killer yes, Bears one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Killer Bears one is, and 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 you you made two X on this, right? Uh, we we pitched <laughs> yeah. it, and we we have many in Rec Gang that we share, but this one, uh, there's some free ones that made a lot of money, but but this one was kind of like a safe play almost, where it, like you know quiet. 2x and um there's going to be some burn mechanics exactly the same way It'd be really cool to have that on stargaze time mint i think that that's the be better word like joe says i got you yeah we we got some uh kill the bits which are you know what those are if you're in to kill the bears but um yeah that that's we'll call it the social experiment and we'll have one on stargaze that's what we'll call it um but you'd have to have some type of I know their mutable contracts are going to go live. So if you're going to launch on Stargaze, you have to, unless you, you could obviously do it cross chain or some other way, but you'd have to have some way to be able to turn those tokens into another NFT, which the mutable contracts almost done. Like, so that, so maybe that's the perfect time, you know, the quote unquote meta. Um, yeah, we should really, we should experiment with this. Uh, I'll message you after, <laughs> but does anyone else have anything they want to discuss? I think I'm good. Good, good, good. So, you want to have any comments to the the open edition uh, meta right now? Anyone have any comments, Don? I, I see do. your hand up. I'm I think sorry, uh, I think last NFT roundtable number one. I think it was one of the best Twitter spaces I ever listened to with you guys. It was like so well balanced. You guys kept it moving. Everybody got to chime in, and um, I told Robo, I said that that was the best hosting I've ever seen on a or heard on a uh twitter space um this one's up there though as well so i'm glad you guys invited me on yeah we appreciate you coming uh, I, I, this I'd was just uh, like to say uh i'd just like to say because i know terra spaces is here uh recording this uh i assume given uh, robo's absence i i think that you did an incredible job i would say this surpasses last week's spaces um i listened to all of it and the, the conversation the flow the hosting skills and capabilities were incredible. Um, beautiful work and uh, looking forward to, to seeing this again. Um, hopefully scheduled directly over Rack FM spaces again, because uh, I think it would be great to have some competition. <laughs> yeah, so I do want to be clear, y'all, that this is a roundtable is hosted by Rack FM. 
Uh, Robo is asleep. Uh, I, I hope he's asleep and nothing's actually happened to him. And next, uh, it's every bi-weekly on Tuesdays. We have it at the same time, bi-weekly on Tuesdays. Rack FM is the host. Uh, Space Skellies does not host this. I believe it was just Robo who got us all in a group message and said, let's make this happen. Uh, so it's it's hats off to him. And if you have any questions, I do see, we'll take one question from, we said, we got a lot of people. We got Ed, I'll bring up a few people from the audience real quick. And then we will hop off because I'm getting tired. <laughs> add a speaker. I'm going to add whoever's needing to be added and see what you guys, and then, yep. I'm going to have to remove somebody from a speaker for that one. Um, Mayor, are you, I think I just brought you up. Can you hear me? Um, hey guys. Uh, sorry, I, I, I'm dropping on the end of the spaces, so I probably missed a lot. I see that Joe is truly disappointed in my appearance. I assume that, um, you know, the Terra spaces will be truly disappointed. As always, I have this very warm welcome in. So um, thank you, everyone. So um, I, I would have a few questions. First of all, um, you know, I bought like 30 um, elixirs the other day and and the price is going down and uh i don't know what they do but i felt inside that it will be great investment <laughs> could you tell me if i should buy more because i'm getting some liquidity the first off elixirs are free for holders so um they're airdropped every two weeks uh so just grab two skellies and don't i mean elixirs you don't need to go buy them you can if you want uh, but if you buy skellies you get them anyways uh, the elixirs are used for a burn mechanism where you'll send elixirs in for a spaceship, which is going to, we want it, we're going to do it sooner, but we wanted to wait until the humans were done. Hopefully we said by the 15th is when we would like it to go live. So you'll send a, we have our own DAP. Um, you'll send your own, it won't just be a click and burn like on Stargaze, the boring way. You'll send your four elixirs um, and your skelly. You don't lose your skelly. Uh, you'll send your four elixirs in, and then you'll burn them and get a spaceship. Uh, and then that is the next step to the evil they're skellies. All, I, they're only good for I burning, Don. Don, Don, you can only burn them. Don, That's all you can do. so many spaceships. Okay, so I wasted so money. Spaceships. I also have two space skillies. I didn't know. I thought the elixirs probably will make well, There you go. Something. You'll have plenty of spaceships, Don. Um, but <laughs> there you I'm go. I'm not sure if you guys discussed, because um, there is this, uh, you know, on Stargaze, we don't really have free mint. Um, I'd love to see it one day um, because with that we would be able to onboard the new communities uh, which we cannot do right now and we cannot compete with the other platforms you know um, the minimum mint on Stargaze is 50 stars which shields the outside communities uh, because otherwise you know uh, if we have talented artists the artist can come and drop the collection in thousands and they can say we drop in on Stargaze, this is free, and people are incentivized to create the wallets and actually mean that. Uh, I hope to see it. I see you, Bonzi, there. Uh, I hope you could um, push the Stargaze with me to actually have it because this is how we onboard the communities. Uh, I believe, yep. not sure if you guys were discussing this. Yep, uh, I covered that a little bit earlier. Uh, I believe it's coming in some format. I here, uh, here's the big catch I'm going to say. Right now, it's a parameter change. If somebody put it up for discussion and a prop, that could be live within a week on the standard mentor. I personally am trying to stop. I'm trying to stay out of putting up more props. I, I have realized I'm getting it. People think it's coming from my project and me as a person and not me by talking to people. So I highly encourage somebody to do it if they would like to see that i just don't want my name attached to it well th then maybe I, I i should do it this is this is good point also uh any advice from anyone if someone come from outside the ecosystem and don't know anything about the stargaze um may, maybe you space killies like um what the person should do at first as a new sorry i was typing something as a new founder yeah. or as a, as a new project yeah there is a new new project coming to stargaze right um they are from ethereum they they don't know anything um how to how to get into communities yeah so i mean the biggest thing um 
for a new community would simply be to reach out to founders and projects. That is the quickest way you get on board and the quickest way you make relationships. Uh, people sometimes overcomplicate it, but I know myself personally, if projects reach out to us, we'll help you. We'll help guide you through the process. And uh, that's just step one. I think that's don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, well, that's cool. Like, I mean, there is small collection coming. It's like people from, from Ethereum, right? Um, and I'm thinking how I can introduce them to make sure that, you know, they see and the collection will be successful. So it potentially can bring like others to see that, hey, it might be the good platform to onboard your um, NFT. Okay, I'm I'm out for now. I see Joe, hands up. So. The, the, best, the best thing you can do, Don, is get them in touch with uh, Cosmos DeFi. He, he's a really excellent guy, and he's he's really great at um, promoting people on his YouTube channel. That's the best thing you can do for anyone new to the to the ecosystem, Don. I think. Anyways, who who uh, this guy is asking some crazy questions? I don't know. I, I would suggest just send them straight to H to the non HR department. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think they'll sort them out. You, you know, sort 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 the sheep from the wolves, and uh, we all know that this ecosystem just needs more wolves. Uh, real quick on that topic i know exactly what you're saying because when people come to the community if they join the discord the official one that's not where the conversations are had so like you want them to see a wider audience um i don't really think there is a huge hub anywhere but i think especially for the smaller creators and i'd have to run this by but like the squad discord tends to be a lot of the people who vote in the community a lot of the people who are pretty active on twitter i feel like the squad discord would be like a very um friendly and opening um discord server for a new project to integrate with the community directly and not have to go out and figure out who to reach out to and who to talk to project by project and joe i see your hands up What's up? I actually have a question for Don, but he left. Uh, uh, oh, he's there. Uh, Don, I was going to ask you, like, what does it feel like to completely ape into the only inflationary NFT collection that's ever been created? Well, it's, it's okay. Um, my investment thesis is always follow your heart and nothing else. And when I always do it, it, it plays out right at the end. So I'm still confident it's, it's going to play out right. I bought a bunch of them too. That's why I'm asking. I, I bought a bunch and I told other people to buy them. I'm like, they're going to burn these. They're deflationary. And then Ban said, oh no, they airdrop them for free regularly on the schedule. <laughs> Gosh. So, so you guys are, are the research people and, and you make absolutely no research and just ape into. Yeah. Send, send all the artists my way. I'll straighten okay. them out. I'm, I'll live on YouTube. I'll straighten well, them out. Well, hey, EJ, I got, one more question since we're trying to figure all this. I mean, it's, it, we're acting like we're total plebs to all this NFT stuff. Um, I was just wondering, is, is there some type of DAP or like website where if a group, a, a bunch of like-minded people wanted to gather together as a group and like form some type of, uh, see, I don't know what you would call it, just some type of com group community where they could all like share NFTs and like do on-chain um, like proposals and stuff is does anyone know of any any kind of like uh on-chain protocol that you could do that <laughs> uh, i think it'd be a really good idea don't you guys think i think tara tara yeah. might have some stuff hmm. Hmm. I, I think i think it's uh i don't think that's quite working yet if, if they've got a base concept mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know if Tara has it there. Because just think about it. I, I like think about like you know even if people outside of different NFT communities, let's just like say like you know a hundred different people with it, within de different NFT communities wanted to get together and like you could have like a treasury, and you could like um, dump stuff into the put stuff in the treasury, and then like you could vote on like what you wanted to do with the treasury. Like I just think that would be a really neat idea, especially like in Web three. Kind of like I don't I don't know. Like there's got to be some type of protocol that you could the the possibilities. I'm just trying to think you could do all kinds of stuff with that. You know. Wait, and then like the the people involved, they could like they could mint a token for all the NFT holders, 
and then give them promises and be like, hey, you know, if you if you mint this thing, you get absolutely nothing. Uh, and then they mint it, they, you know, they get the NFT, they stake it. And then all of a sudden, like you just start giving them these absolutely worthless tokens. And then they're like, oh my God, I'm getting paid in tokens? This is incredible. And then, you know, they just start supporting your project like heavily everywhere you go. And then like all the really hardworking uh, NFT projects, um, you know, that go, ooh, 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 um, start whinging that you're stealing all of their liquidity. Is that what you're talking about? Something like that? Yeah. That sounds awesome. You could you could probably do that even if it wasn't your intellectual property. It, it, literally, like a hundred percent. I think that's the perfect scenario. What you're talking about. I couldn't think of a better one. Well, you, you know, people go are go ape bananas over these tokens. Like, no matter if it's. I, 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 I reckon, you know, pe- people would turn into absolute animals. If you, you, you could make it, you could call it banana token or like a uh, strawberry token. And you can make probably, you could probably just make a blank red NFT and just say, send me your strawberry tokens and I'll give you five red NFTs. And people would, I mean, come on. I mean, we got, we got Don, the Don Kryptonian. He's over here buying NFTs. He doesn't even know what they're doing. Like, I'm surely we get other people to buy like a red NFT that, you know, you put like maybe a little smiley face on it or something like that. And then before you know it, it it's selling on, on stars for like 3000 stars or something. I don't know. There might be something like that out there. It, it could get interesting. You never know what the possibilities are. I'm just saying, let's think outside the box a little bit. What would you call such a protocol if you were to, to build it? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Maybe Star Enterprise Star 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 Star, or is that was that already been taken? I was thinking something on the lines of like the Enterprise. The Enterprise, or maybe yeah, like might as well like if I'm already stealing other people's ideas, I might as well steal shit from like Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, no uh, Star Trek. Star Trek, Star Trek dude. So much fucking triggers some people with that one. <laughs> The enterprise, kind of like you know, we could call it. Um, it's just too. We easy. could call it Momo, like Osmo, Momos. I don't know. Man, y'all gotta stop. And, <laughs> Mary, oh, I didn't shit. know you were this funny. Anyways, uh, EJ, I, I'm sorry, man, I, I didn't know. Like it was first time. Usually, you're so serious. Uh, <laughs> I know, that was the you longest want... troll I've ever seen the mayor poll. I'm, I'm so happy because last night I was listening to a happy hour space. And for some reason, I think uh, my, my, I got, I got blessed beyond belief that my number got picked. And um, I won a space skelly last night. And it was just, it was a great way to start the week. Let me just put it that way. I'm happy to hear that. I think Bands is the one who uh, hooked you up, right? Rigged it. Absolutely <laughs> rigged yeah. it. No, I, the, yeah. the crazy thing was I was listening on and off and like like for the for like the five minutes that I was not listening, I um I think that's when he drew the numbers. Like he was drawing numbers like all throughout the space. And then like at the end of the space when I was listening, like Joe's like, oh yeah, and you know, you know, Ed won, Ed won an NFT. Like, don't forget to, you know, contact, blah blah blah. And I was like, wait a second, what, what did I win? I didn't know what, even know what it was. It was, it was just funny. But listen, the, the giveaways are never rigged. Yeah. However, if someone already wins something the same day, and if I pick their number again, I don't tell them, but I draw another number. So I don't know if that's rigged, but. Yeah, you legitimately. Yeah, won. yeah. I went back and listened to the space, and then I, I, I guess Don John was in there, and he, he gave, he gave away a couple NFTs, and um, so yeah, it, it was, it was just a great way to start the week. So, um, thanks, EJ, and and uh, thank you guys, and it's been been good so far. But anyways, I'll, I'll uh, let you guys carry on. Well, I'm glad it started your week off off good. And I blew was that Joe's space. I think that's the one band was on. Is that correct? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. All, right. All right, guys. Well, last time go around. I know we're approaching. Wow. Uh, what is this? I don't even know how long we've been on the spaces. I just stopped counting. But is there anything else you would like to cover? Or are we good to rock? Looks like I'm we're good. good. 
All right, guys. Well, sure. um, once again, this is uh, if you guys see Terra Spaces down in the listener section, they do all of the recording and audio editing to make our voices sound crystal clear and spectacular. If you can donate some stars, uh, Juno, whatever you got, even if you got some sitting on the side from staking rewards, send it over to them. And with that, we will talk to you guys um, on our biweekly meeting of the roundtable. It is hosted once again by Rack FM. And that'll be in two weeks from now on Tuesday. If you have any questions, feel free to message any of the panelists up here and we will get, get you guys taken care of. All right, guys. You guys have a great night, morning, wherever you're at in the world. Make it a good one. See ya. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Ether. That was the NFT Roundtable number two, hosted by Space Skellies with Cosmos Joe and Signal. Recorded on Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. For TerraSpaces.org, I'm Finn. Thanks for listening. And if you want to keep listening, I don't even want you to donate. I just want Robo back. Just, just bring my Robo back. Bring my baby back, baby. I need my baby back, baby back, baby back. Just bring my baby back. Thanks for listening. Wake it up like a basement dweller. Stepped out the door and her brace is yelling. 2020, what an ugly shit show. Staring at the fucking rig roll from the get go. Looking outside, the whole state's on fire. The fuck do you expect when you embrace the liars and replace the writers with AI just like us? Emaciated models killing bright birds. First in, last out, picture me rolling. The worst time to cash out, so what you holding? The Burks gonna cash cow country stolen. Drooling over chicken like the goose is golden. Trying to be so full, spitting that molten lava from the bottom of the caldera. I'm hot and gonna put it in a bottle and offer it to the god who hit the gas full throttle, blasting off in a rocket. There are many people who will, will see things happen to them that are in their favor. So someone's looking over me. So that's, a, that's a fascinating phenomenon when that happens. And what, when you analyze those situations, what you find is, is that we as humans simply have a profound inability to understand statistics and probability. Stitching these writings, living that life like Who would have guessed you turn out this nice, right? Avoiding stress, that's the motherfucking secret Print that shit on a motherfucking leaflet I'm just an asshole hooked on the bricks Looking at the rectangles, damn they kinda thick We've gone through a whole lot of kings here Cutting off heads just to bring cheer Getting all fired up, Tiger King, line them up When you'd give an arm and a leg just to try the junk On some first time buyer's luck Alexa, set a reminder and remind me to buy a bunch And put your hands up if you fuck this year And keep them in the air if you're picking up the spare And put your mask on just to go outside Looking at the planet about to downsize So climate change will not make Earth Basically, every other coastal city that we've spent thousands of years building uh, in the, since the dawn of civilization. Terra spaces.